Amplifiers are widely used in many parts of the electrical engineering discipline. You can use amplifiers for signal conditioning, as we have seen in active filters. You can use amplifiers for increasing the power you provide to the next stage. That could be either a voltage amplification or a current amplification. Or you also use them to have a controlled gain in your circuit. You can characterize amplifiers in various categories. One way is to call them linear amplifiers or switch mode amplifiers. Or you can have a look at the classes like class A amplifiers, class B. Then there is a mixture, class A, B in between. There is a class C, class D are the switch mode amplifiers. Class E and F are also switch mode amplifiers, mainly used in radio frequency applications and so on. Operational amplifiers are typically used for signal conditioning, for example, in the 5 volt or in the 3.3 volt domain. You can buy operational amplifier as integrated circuits, as chips, and typically they are linear amplifiers. Most of them are implemented in a three-stage approach, where the first stage is a differential input stage. Now we already have met the non-inverting input called the VP here in the active filters. And then there is an inverting input called VN here. And on top of that, we have the difference between those two, VP minus VN. Now the current source down here, which typically also would be implemented through various transistors, but drawn here as a current source, is providing a constant current that is shared between the two branches here. Depending on how much you open or close one of those two transistors, so controlling the GM value of each of those MOSFETs here by their respective gate voltages, which are the input voltages, we get more or less current in each of those two branches on the drain of the MOSFETs. And that in turn controls the voltage drop across the drain resistors. Now in most processes, these drain resistors here are also implemented as a specific connection of other transistors and the same holds for the current source down here. There are various kinds of processes for example, CMOS stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductors, where complementary means you have P and N channel transistors available. Then you have bi CMOS, which is the same with the CMOS, but additionally you also have bipolar transistors. These bipolar transistors very often come handy for implementing current sources and precision voltage references for those. And then there are bi C DMOS processes, which on top also contain diodes. Each of those processes has their own set of components that are available to design circuits with. Now, depending on how much voltage drop we have across that resistor, we are controlling the gate of the next stage, which is called a voltage amplification stage. As the name indicates, its job is to create an output that is swinging all the way from the so-called rails, where the rails are the supply voltages VDD and VSS. Now VDD stands for drain and the S in VSS stands for source. And the double up on the letters means that it's the voltage outside the chip and within the chip, you typically use the abbreviations VD and VS and the connection, the bond wires, the mechanical connection from the pin of the chip to the actual semiconductor is creating the impedance in between those two voltages. Now, the voltage amplification stage typically swings nearly all the way to VDD and VSS only limited by the voltage drop across the current source down here 
and the remaining on resistance of the MOSFET up here when the gate voltage is very high. So the voltage amplification stage already provided the voltage that we actually want at the output. So the remaining thing that we need to drive the next stage is the current. And that is done by a current amplification stage, which by itself often can contain more than one stages, for example, Darlington connections or any other connections involving more transistors. The one that I'm showing here is a so-called totem pole stage, in this case containing two n-channel MOSFETs, but very often one of those two could also be a p-channel MOSFET. And finally, we are driving the output of the operational amplifier here. So the current amplification stage is the one that is responsible for the very low output impedance, ideally zero, whereas we have a very high input impedance looking into the gates of the MOSFETs. Ideally, there is no current running into those gates for a steady state gate voltage, and that provides the ideally infinite input impedance. Now the dominating parasitic in an amplifier limiting its usage in terms of frequency and not maintaining the ideal conditions for any frequency towards infinity is the so-called dominating pole represented by the capacitor here. Before we have a look into where that capacitor is coming from, I can recommend you the book Audio Power Amplifiers from Douglas Self for further reading on linear amplifiers. In this case, used for audio power and not operational amplifiers, but the principles are basically the same.